Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator news and updates. A few things to talk about today, so hopefully it'll be things that you guys find interesting. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides, as well as any future updates and future guides that will be coming down the road. Link to Patreon can be found in the description below. Okay, first off, as they are an absolutely wonderful uh, resource for the community in flight simulation, I want to make sure that everyone is aware of the FS Elite desktop application. It is just like any other desktop application in the aspect that you download it, install it, and it gives you direct access to any of their content that's currently on the website. Now, the other very cool thing that they are starting to do now is they are doing audio publishing with some articles, meaning that you can now just sort of play your article or uh, play your uh FS Elite search, if you will, from Google Podcasts, also available on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, and listen to the articles that they post versus having to read them. Uh, they have identified that, just like myself, actually, many of us prefer to uh, just be able to kick back and listen to some of these news articles versus actually having to read them, and they are starting to add more and more of that functionality. Now, as of the moment, only certain uh, articles are available with audio publishing, but their goal is, in the end, to have all of their content be uh, available via audio um, retention as well. So, very awesome. Excited for FS Elite and the new desktop app. I will definitely be downloading it and using it for future videos. Next up, we finally have confirmation. There it is, the A2A Simulations Comanche in Microsoft Flight Simulator. We got some news a little while back uh, that the A2A was developing the Comanche, but we have yet to see any uh, artwork of it actually inside the simulator. That has now officially changed. Obviously, there's still a ton more to do, but you can see here in the screenshots that there it is in the Microsoft Flight Simulator hangar. Can't complain about that. The Comanche is a really neat aircraft. I have always loved this aircraft. If I had the choice to pick which aircraft I would want to learn and I think a Comanche would be an awesome one. The unfortunate part is that I'm six foot one so that would probably be a little bit of an uncomfortable situation but yet nonetheless I want to try. I cannot wait for the A2A uh, Comanche to be released. This is an aircraft that I have long loved. I just there's just something about it. It's overall shape and, and feel and look it just I don't know. I don't know what it is about the Comanche but I've loved the Comanche. When my father was taking his pilot's license uh, training there was a Comanche that was always parked out at the field that we used to fly out of and uh, just there was just something about it. I think it's a gorgeous looking plane. It's just it's got all the right shapes in all the right places I guess. But for those of you who are interested in the kind of work that A2A Simulations is known for, two of the cockpits uh, for the uh, P-51 found in the Reno DLC pack are actually made by A2A Simulations. I can tell you right now, guys, they do a wonderful job. And it's funny because the article hits this right on the head in the aspect of the fact that uh, one such developer who has been surprisingly absent from Microsoft Flight Simulator was A2A Simulations. Uh, so it is really nice to see them coming into the party. They do absolutely great work. I cannot wait for this aircraft to come along. I know this is very, very early to start with the hype train. I'm sure that there's a ton of work left to do. We don't have any kind of in-cockpit imagery, anything like that. But, uh, ooh, I want this one. So <laughs> very, very excited. I hope... Uh, a2A Simulations has a speedy process with this one. Another commercial aircraft hitting the floor here soon. We have Just Flight will be bringing the Fokker 100 and Fokker 70 to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, this will be following the Fokker F28 Fellowship, uh, which was also developed by or being developed by Just Flight. The Fokker 100 for me reminds me very much of like a CRJ. Um, one of the bigger ones, even sort of some similarities to the Mad Dog, if you will. Uh, so definitely along those same kind of lines as far as the overall structure and design of the aircraft, very similar. Um, but the look and appearance of it, I am actually absolutely digging. These screenshots look wonderful. Really, really digging this aircraft. This is very cool. I love the way the speedways are. It's like independent panels. And then you got these ones back here in the back. I've always thought those rear speed brakes were just 
weird looking and yet cool. I think the first aircraft that I saw that actually had one of those was when Just Flight did the BA-146. I had never seen an aircraft that had those speed brakes in the back of the tail like that. So again, a lot of detail very clearly being put into everything. And I think that's why they showed the circuit breakers here. If you're willing to put that much effort and detail into each individual circuit breaker, you can see wear marks, you can see dirt marks, you can see all kinds of indentation that the aircraft has been used and abused, if you will. Um, when you're willing to put that kind of detail on it, that tells you what the rest of it's going to be like. These, I had to laugh and not laugh in a, in a hoo -hoo way, but laugh in a whoa. Uh, but uh, almost... I had to like do a double take. I'm like, were those afterburner outlets? <laughs> Obviously they're not, but it was like one of those that like, caught me off guard for a second. I was like, man, if they open up like afterburners do, I was like, okay, now I really got to see what this plane's made of. But look at all the detail and texture work. I mean, they're really coming a long way. I love the life and energy that, uh, that just flight seems to put into their aircraft. It's really, really an awesome thing to see. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is going to be really cool. Definitely showing her age, all your LCD screens and things like that. I mean, you've got a few here, but definitely replace. There's your warning panel right there. Definitely going to be stepping uh, back in time when we get into this aircraft here. A oh, cool looking plane, man. I actually kind of like this overhead panel structure better than what we see with like the A320 or the 737. Um, I kind of like having your light switches and everything down at this kind of an angle where you just sort of reach up and push versus a... Uh, Versus the overhead where, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it, but I, I, I like this kind of format better. Uh, so I am excited about that too. And then you have all your, you know, electrical power and everything like that up on top. So kind of neat. Very, very good. Very, very good. So again, another aircraft. Can't wait to see this one come out. This will be another fun one to do. Um, hopefully this weekend we'll be also flying out the Mad Dog 80 finally. So I know I've been promising that for a while, but I keep getting buried. Dave Garwood releases the Freeware Hawker Hunter. This is uh, an aircraft that caught me off guard right out of the gate. I hadn't seen one in a long time. I think our, our air museum out here at Pima Air Museum might have one of these. But it was like one of those I did a double take. Such an old yet cool looking plane. Those old bubble canopies. I mean, this has a lot of history back coming back. It almost reminds me. It was like... Oh, kind of reminds me of like the end of the F-86 series, you know, where, where they had those huge giant bubble canopies and the streamlined back on the fuselage. So another very cool aircraft for this uh, simulator. Now, the other great part about it is this guy, it is for free on FlightSim.2. So make sure you guys check this one out. We're definitely going to be showcasing this on the channel. Um, I have absolutely no problem checking this one out and again when it's a free aircraft you're not going to hear me complain i'm not going to piss and moan about it and quite frankly from what i'm seeing here oh, why did we get out of that the screenshots look great uh the details look great the uh the overall uh texturing of the aircraft i think at the very least you're going to have a gorgeous plane on your hands i mean look at that it's going to be a lot of fun Definitely going to have to try this one out. This would be a cool one to do like an air show with, like with a group of people. I think it'd be kind of neat because it's a bigger plane, but yet the same token, I think, in the right formation, it could look really, really cool. Uh, these are beautiful screenshots, by the way. But again, completely free aircraft, guys. Flight Sim.2 is the place to go to get it. Um, definitely my source for add-on aircraft. And to uh, Dave Garwood, I hope uh, I hope this really brings attention to your work and uh, look forward to seeing more of what you've got. We have further updates on the Fulcrum Throttle Kickstarter. This is one that definitely has my attention, and I'm actually on the debate and the fence side about how far I'm willing to uh, to go with this one because I actually really like the overall setup. There's a couple things that have me that I dislike about it, but it's really hard to tell here. So this is a kickstarting campaign, essentially meaning that in order for the campaign to actually go through and the product to go into full production development, they have to reach a certain financial goal. And once those that financial asset is achieved, then they can then send that off to Fulcrum and then Fulcrum can then begin actual production of the unit. So a couple things to catch on here. Um, I'm always looking for new flight sim hardware and new um uh, developers coming out of the gate. I'm always looking for ways to help out there. You know, I'm certainly not made of money, but uh, it's definitely one of those things that if you catch it on the right thing that really grabs you, it's, it gets my attention. So a couple things to be aware of. Pricing will, of the actual unit once it goes into production has yet to be determined. The Kickstarter options here, the things that I want to make you guys aware of. So they have to hit 50,000 pounds in order to make it uh, into production. That's the goal here. 10 pounds or more, you'll receive a Fulcrum Simulator Controls mug. 
300 pounds or more and you'll receive the fulcrum one throttle however at the 300 pound mark it's a limited of only 100 pledges anything over 100 and you come in to this range now so at 349 or more no matter whether basically so once this expires this will be your next option to receive the fulcrum one throttle okay and so this is where my catch is, right? Um, you have some some pretty awesome looking hardware here. This is one of the two options of the desk mount clamp system. So this is a CAD drawing where you could have it set on a stand system. Now this would have to be very, very solid is, is my thing. And the reason why I say that, I'm not worried about it breaking or falling off or anything like that. But at this angle, if, if this is not an extremely hard piece, if you do not have all all of this has to be very, very hardened. And if it's not, what happens is when you go to pull that throttle back, you're going to feel it bend. You're going to feel it wiggle. It's going to go wing, wing, wing. Now, it may not bend out of shape, but you're going to feel it bounce, right? However, the one they showed here, you can see it's a desk clamp coming up from underneath, which I'm totally fine with. And I really appreciate the large panel they put on it because it actually opens the door for other things, meaning that you could put your, you know, your flight controls on it, just sort of like you could put them up here if you wanted. Uh, it gives you room maybe for your mouse if you want to put your mouse in front. Of it. it gives you option rather than just having the square block in your way that you can't do anything with because it's too small to, you know, too small to be useful, but big enough to be a nuisance. So I really, really like the desk clamp here. So I'm actually not too concerned about the second one that we saw. But the second one is an option. And depending on the flight rig you get, you may actually have, you know, some sort of wood or panel that actually yeah, this wraps around. So a couple of different options there. Now, the deal is, is that if we want to take part in the Kickstarter program, we have until Saturday, July 20 or July 2nd of 2022. So 7 a.m. nonetheless. Um, so I really do... I've been on the fence about this one for a while. So, and I guess given the fact that it's 23rd, it's time for me to, uh, you know, do something or get off the pot here. Um, but if everything goes into full production and we actually make it to the Kickstarter uh, goal here, they're expecting shipping at November 1st of 2022. Now, here's the thing that I do want to bring to you guys' attention. This is very clearly an all metal construction. You can see it very clearly. There's a couple things, like I said, that I'm not too crazy about. I'm not sure how I feel about this, but again, this is the Kickstarter program. You know, texturing, design work, cleaning it up, cosmetic appealing changes, uh, those could very easily change between now and production. This may just be a matter of, here's the unit that we have in its base format that we want to show that it's working. And I can really appreciate that. Okay, so I'm sure that there's a lot still to come to this. But even if there's not, I want you guys to keep in mind that Honeycomb just released the Alpha XPC series at $349. Now, I'm not saying that price point to shoot down Honeycomb. I'm not. Inflation is through the roof. Pricing is through the roof. Taxing is through the roof. Shipping is through the roof. Get, we all know what's going on around us. That's going to impact our sales. It just is. It's just the way of the world. You know, it, groceries, you know, XYZ affects XYZ, you know. So I get that. So I'm when I, the reason why I'm bringing that up is because I don't want anyone looking at $349 and going, oh, my gosh, that's way too expensive. It's really not anymore, and that's becoming the norm for flight simulation equipment. So here's where I'm thinking, where my thought process, and by the way, I have not been contacted by these people. This is completely what I'm thinking and feeling after reading this article and reading the last few that have come out. The things that's catching my attention, if I jump on and if I actually make it to the $300 more or 300 pound, that's going to be a little bit over 300 bucks for me. I think that comes out like 320, maybe, maybe less, maybe more. Crap, I can't remember. But... The regardless, the part that I want to make is let's say it's three hundred and forty dollars U.S. dollars, right? Let's say what that comes out to. There's still this pricing to be determined after the throttle releases, but like all products will be released reasonable and cheaper than offerings from other manufacturers. Now that's a hard pill to swallow on that one, and I don't know that I can necessarily give them that credit because they're already at the pledge point more expensive than honeycomb right but that doesn't mean they're not competitive so my thought process is here is if i pledge and everything goes well and i make it into the 300 300 range the 300 pound range then i could wind up with this thing by november maybe christmas right 
and come out with an all metal product. I really like the look right there. I really like this look that is very clean. So I come out with an all metal product, very easily detachable and, you know, movable. Um, doesn't have all the bells and whistles, for example, the Bravo does. Um, but looks like a very sturdy structure um, for less than what it's pro- most likely going to sell for. If you can pledge it at this price, it's going to it's going to sell more here. Okay, that's the whole point of the pledging. The whole point of the of a pledge is to offer it at a cheaper rate, but you have to wait for it to go through production and all that. But the benefit is that since you pledge and you helped us out, kind of thing, right? That's the way that the companies work. We're going to give it to you cheaper than what we're going to sell it on the market for. Nine times out of ten, that's how that works. So I know I sort of went on a rant around this one, but I wanted you guys to uh, to think about that one and, and let me know where you're at. And last up on the list is Aerofoil Labs releases the Bristol B-23 from Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is another very small, lightweight aircraft, can carry 120 liters of fuel with a combined of 300 kilograms of useful load. Means the aircraft is well suited for flight training in a number of scenarios. Now, this aircraft definitely caught my attention when I first found out it was coming to Microsoft Flight Simulator. I think it's a cool little plane. I believe this is the one that I saw that had the side stick in it. Let me see if I can find it. Yep, there it is. No, no, that's a center stick. Center stick, that's what it was. There was another one that had the side stick that caught my attention. So it's got a center stick. You fly it kind of like a fighter. Reminds me of a uh, of a little katana or anything, or something like that. Uh, very, very cool, tiny little plane. This is going to be a fun one to fly around when I have no problem checking this one out. This one is $24.99. You can find it in the in-sim marketplace right now. Um, I prefer to try to find it, honestly, external. But, you know, it's all about the... Uh, the updates and whether or not we want to, you know, wait for them to hit the channel, not hit the channel as far as uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator's marketplace. And then um, also another big little tidbit is B-23 is planned on being imported into X-Plane 12 as a study level aircraft or bringing. I should not say imported, but it's going to be brought to X-Plane 12 as a study level plane in the future. So something to think about there as well um, if you are planning on uh, testing out X-Plane 12 when it releases so again another tiny cool little plane another neat little uh, uh, addition to microsoft flight simulator i love seeing all the new aircraft coming down the lines it's just really really bringing the sim back to life it's really coming a long way well my friends as always that is going to wrap up today's episode so please do me a favor stay safe stay healthy if you guys liked the video be sure to hit that like and subscribe button ring that bell for notification of future content as it comes out we have a lot more coming in the coming uh, days here we are finally in the process of getting that sim set up so we're going to be bringing some live air traffic control to the simulator videos as well a lot of things coming down the line guys stick with me thank you for all of your continued support and as always i'll see you in the next one